Welcome to the island. Come sail the way, come sail the way. So, today we're on an island off grid. Let's get started. Alrighty, walls built. I originally thought this generator was gonna be removed, but apparently not. So I was gonna put everything, kinda shift it down that way. Um, but uh, here we go. Got a nice wall for our stuff. This is the Sunmoto system we're using here, the Sunmoto Sun Turf. And we're using 28 of these Q-cell 480s. Goes so you can put one for the array in here. Just gonna swing it over, get it up there, and got it. Harry, Nate, help him out. Help him out, Nate. Help him out. Help him out. That's it. Yep, that's it. It looks sketchy, but that's it. You get my good yeah, it, it'll be fine. Don't worry. I did. So it leans off a little bit until you put the screws in, and then that holds it back, and then it matches up with the connection kit. So you're good. Awesome. Wonderful. One more? One more. I'll put the screws in. All right, third bracket's going on. So these just uh, they sit right in each other very nicely. Um, so you can uh, put the inverter up and uh, and slide that in. Could put all the brackets up first. That would work too. <laughs> I chose not to. Uh, yep, that's it. Uh, over to the right, definitely. Oh, yeah, there you go. There it is. That's it. It's perfect. It sits back when you put the shit in. Yep. There it is. Evolt Max. I added three quarter lockers. Oh, good. Do we need to ground these? Careful of the grass, guys. <laughs> what are you doing? You Don't cut it yet. Oh. There you go. Your boots. Oh, Devin just pulled it out. Oh, there you go. Oh, beautiful. Oh, that's how it's done right there. Good thing it's gonna come right into the door when we pull it out.
Maybe tomorrow. Wait for Sean. Wait for Sean. Don't kill Devin. There you go. Thank you, Nate. <laughs> Luckily, none of you guys get seasick. <laughs> Day two, we're just getting some panels on. These are the Q Cell 480 bifacials. The only thing I don't like about these is they have really short leads. These are like commercial grade. Meant to be hooked up that away. Oh, look, it's Sean. How you doing, buddy? <laughs> so, here we have the top row of panels going on. I had to mute this out because they were blasting the radio. Uh, and then over there, we got Harry uh, wiring in. Uh, we're putting a junction box outside the, the shed there and then uh, hooking everything up. Welcome to the chaos that is day two. Uh, so, here we have our PDP over here. Um, breakers for the charge controllers. We got a PV disconnect over here just to be able to turn it off right here. Um, that's for the power coming in from the array. And I'm doing four strings in. We got the two XW Pros. Two charge controllers that I still need to hook up. And then we got the Evolt Maxes here. And I did put these all with a nice loop of loop of flex with the battery cables a little longer than they needed to be. Um, but that's so you can move them around, get them out of the way, because there's really not enough room in this shed for this system. So uh, there it is. Kohler generator in here as well. Um, they're gonna put louvers on these windows for some ventilation. We had this thing running a little bit earlier and it's pretty warm in here. And there's the array. You guys are all done paneling, just doing some wire management. Let's go back there and see how they're doing. I really love the way the uh, bifacial panels look from the back. Um, that was part of the reason I chose them for this job um, is because you can see this from the lake and uh, I didn't want a big white sheet being shown from the lake. So great job here, guys. Uh, some things I like about this uh, PDP and there's some things that are just annoying or could be done differently. So first things first, they don't send the screws that fit in here. They're 632. Include them with a breaker, include them with the rest of the stuff. I couldn't find them anywhere. Maybe I'm blind, but uh, this is the second time that's happened. So 632 screws, whatever. They're very common, but it's just annoying that they're not there. Secondly, going on to the back of these, you can see these crimps here, very beautifully done. Um, why not put just put lugs on the back? You know, I understand that they loosen up, but it's just, you know, so coming coming off of this bus here, we just have a little jumper, a little jumper. Why not? I don't know. I don't know what, what they could do differently with it, but just annoying. Um, 
also I do have two of these lugs landed here um, that was kind of the only way I could do it they do send a longer bus for the for this that could fit three breakers um, but it still only has two holes in the bottom so I just ended up using this one um, that back neutral bar or, or sorry ground bar that's really nice I like that one um, this up here this is the uh, loadout grid in this is gonna be our generator in Hold on, the wire coming through yeah you're good just need probably another six inches on that to get it to land it um, yeah otherwise I do like this better than the Outback version of it there's a lot more room so kudos all right, well, end of day two. Tomorrow, we're gonna be commissioning and finishing, well, finishing hooking everything up first, but commissioning. I'm gonna tie in the generator, gonna tie in the solar, gonna tie in the output, and uh, finish, hooking up. finish hooking up the DC runs in from the panels. And that will be it. This system has, I think it's 14 kW worth of uh, solar, uh, that's DC. Um, it's got uh, three Fortress E-Vault Maxes, which equal about 55 kilowatt hours of storage. Um, and then it's got the two XW Pros, so that's 13.6 uh, kW rated uh, on the outside, uh, output side. Um, and so when I was designing this system, I kind of uh, you know, this is a, it's a large property. It's got uh, two different houses and a couple of maintenance sheds and a, a boat house. And you know, the, the one thing it does have is it has a lot of pumps. It's got, uh, there's at least one at the house, maybe two. Um, then there's one at the, there's a guest house. Uh, I, there's not one at the boathouse yet, but there may be soon. Um, it's got an electric dryer, which uh, if you've seen some of my previous videos with other uh, inverters, you know that didn't work out so well. Um, and so when I was designing this system, I, you know, I was a little hesitant to go with the Schneider just because of the, the previous issues we've had, but you know, um, they, they really are trying to make this right for me and I figured I'd give it a shot. Um, I was worried about using a solar because of the uh, dryer and the pumps. Uh, the pumps are all 120 volt. So, uh, you know, it, I didn't want to install a system that was gonna have problems. And, you know, this is a very different use case from the Schneider that I was having problems with. Uh, that one was, um, you know, it was just on standby. It was AC coupled. It was just sitting there doing nothing. Um, this one's gonna be on all the time, uh, except for in the winter. They're gonna turn it off in the winter. Um, but it, it's, you know, it's off grid with a generator. So definitely very different use case. And I, I really liked the uh, surge capabilities that come with these inverters. Um, I decided to go with two of them because uh, there's, there's a lot of unknowns at this island. Uh, there, you know, different guests staying and you never know who's gonna be doing what, you know, they might be running a space heater and a dryer and a pump and um, so, uh, I went with uh, with the Schneider as well because I, you know, they, they did want the ability to expand, so it'd be pretty easy to add another inverter to that system. Um, and uh, you know, add, add batteries. You know, it is kind of tight in there, but um, but they definitely would be able to uh, in the future. So 
uh, you know, not that you couldn't do that with, with a Solark. You could obviously add another inverter. You could add more batteries just the same as you could with this. Um, but uh, that was kind of part of my decision as well here. Um, yeah, otherwise, I, I, you know, I wanted to give them another shot. Uh, they've been good to me, and I wanted to, you know, give them a fair shot with an off-grid system. Um, and this one just happened to come up. What a beautiful place. We actually got a call from the island next door as well. They want to add some more Simplify batteries. So hopefully uh, I'll, I'll, you'll see you over there in a little while. All right, well, there it is. <laughs> it does get a little bit tight in here. Uh, these battery cables are all pretty flexible, so they'll move up. Um, we got the solar coming in here. I got the SER tied in for the generator in, and the, the this is the grid out, generator in. Um, and we're just about ready to start commissioning here. So um, I ended up stuffing the uh, AGS inside of that connection box. I really don't want to have anything out here um, or any way into this thing. There's a lot of mice out here. So I'm trying to keep everything uh, as contained as possible. So there we go, commissioning time. All right, well, there it is, finished product. The solar disconnect over there. Inverter disconnects, charge controller disconnects, bypass. Our generator over there. It's get kind of warm in here. They're gonna ventilate a little bit. Um, and then we have our batteries. Inside home. That's connected actually via Wi-Fi. And uh, Everything is working as it should. We are all done with this one. I'm super happy with the way it came out. So yeah, thanks for watching and uh, catch you on the next one.